The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. In our previous episode, we were working on the mini pinball machine. Specifically, we started building some mechanisms for it, targets, pop bumpers. And also, Felix began wiring another revision of the prototype motherboard. Yeah, on the board, um, we're gonna have two spots for microcontrollers, the Arduino and the uh, Teensy. Right, so people could use whichever one they wanted. Mm -hmm. Sounds good, and the idea is that board will just sit in the back of the unit as one piece with a plug on it for power and also plugs for programming it via USB. Yep. All right, so I'm gonna continue working on the mechanisms. Felix, why don't you continue working on the board and then once you get a little further along, we can use the board to test the mechanisms that I'm building. we Will do, sounds good. Sounds like a great plan. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Should we take it for a spin? Inspired designs. Imhotep's priests. Regrettable acting. No one seems to get it. Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Here's where we're at so far with our uh, pinball board. We've got headers for the Arduino and headers for the Teensy. And then we have our shift registers and our LED driver. And then we have our MOSFETs over here. This is an amplifier. Of course, we have our screen. We have a regulator, uh, on-off switch, and our battery. And then we have these two headers here. One is for the inputs and the other is for the outputs to drive the lights. Oh, uh, additionally, there's the, there are these four headers here to drive the um, solenoids. One last thing we need to add is uh, somewhere on here, headers to drive servos. On this board here, I also have tests for the inputs. On the uh, Arduino sketch, I'm just pulling the uh, inputs here. So we have four groups of four bits. So one means it's uh, pulled high, and when I push the button, it'll pull it low. So it goes from a one to a zero. And we're just gonna test all the inputs to make sure that they are working. So far, so good. Da, 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 da. All right, so that works. And also, I um, duplicated the input header on this breakout board as well. So we can test like this. Okay, we see that the serial output changed. And then also, since I duplicated the header here, I can plug that in there. And we see that it changes there as well. So in this instance, we can have uh, like these rings that we're going to test. I can plug them into this header. And I still have this these breakout buttons attached. We're going to test the... Uh, continuity of these these rings to make sure that they'll work with our system for the pop bumper. Okay, yeah, see, so when we, uh, we see that we're making contact, we close the circuit here between these two rings and the, uh, the pinball, and then we can see the output of the serial changing from a one to a zero. So that means it's working, pretty cool. I reprinted the disc for the pop bumper. And my idea is you'll run a wire up through it. So let's try that out. All right, so then we have this wire here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this down. I'm gonna slide this notched ring over it. And it should pinch onto the wire and give us a connection. So the conductivity of this uh, ring isn't super great to begin with. Mm, I'm not getting anything right there. I need to connect the wire in a better way. All right, so I looped the wire around and soldered it to the ring. So that should give us a pretty good connection. So I modified this to have some slits in it for the wire. So let's put that up in place, put it all up in the grill. I'm just gonna put a little hot glue on it. Let's put these pieces together. There we go. I've attached the wire here. Hopefully it holds up. I am not sure. I guess we'll see. All right, so I'm just gonna hot glue this in place again, but I probably should also design a bracket that goes on this side. So we have the um, mounting points for the pop bumper here, and then we'll have the mounting points for the solenoid here. So that way they kind of crisscross like an X. Hey Felix, do you still have that switch example that we could fire up? Cool, let's test that soon. Well, I've attached the solenoid and the two contacts to the board here, and here is a bearing, and it appears to be working. Looks like it makes sufficient contact and uh, it can trigger the microcontroller 
to send a signal to actuate the solenoid. Pretty cool. I assembled this, hopefully it works. This represents it mounted into the table. Uh, the play field will be above the servo. So like the play field would be right here where my finger is. So the ball would go down the drain and it would drop in here. And then it would just sit there and there'd probably be a switch like right here where my finger is. And then when you're ready to load the next ball, it goes vroop, and then it'll roll down boonk, back into the shooter lane. I mean, I'll have to mock up more of a play field. I'll just laser cut a few more pieces, but uh, this is basically it. Okay, I still need to cut a few more parts, but basically the servo fits here. Anyway, this goes boop, right there. This allegedly has room, then this rotates up and that should load it. I need to put something here and this needs to be adjusted, but so far so good. I have a switch in place that tells us when the ball is there. I'm gonna bring this down and the ball will push the switch. So I'm gonna bring this up just enough to cradle the ball, but also for the ball to push the switch down. So we need to see, see the switch will hold the ball up a certain amount. So I'm gonna bring this up just to it. Okay, now the reason why I want that as a position is because I'm gonna consider that to be the home of the rotating portion. And therefore, I want the home of this to also trigger a switch. Uh, what I'd probably do though in the real thing is to have like another notch here and then have a roller switch so it will engage or disengage the notch. And that's how I know what my home position is. All right, so I'm gonna figure out where to put the home switch and then we should be able to wire this up to Felix's example board. Okay, so home position, there. Ball drain, there. That's good too, so see how we go home position off, ball switch off? The fact that they're not the same is, is good because then we can tell what sequence is going on. So when we move the servo, we'll see home release and then see the ball release and that lets us know we're going in the right direction. Bam, just like that. Cool, all right, I think it's time to do a test using a microcontroller. All right, and here I've, uh... Got a program on the Arduino that is running a Hello World example for the LCD, just to confirm that all the connections are correct. It's really simple. Here on the screen you can see it. Include the liquid crystal library, initiate the library, and right here are all the pins that we're using. 15 is reset, 14 is enable, and then data 4, data 5, data 6, and data 7 are 19, 18, 4, and 2 respectively. And then we create the object, and all we're doing is sending hello world. And then we are incrementing the number of seconds since last reset. That's all it's doing. This is just a proof of concept that the LCD is working. I've added four headers for um, servos and I've attached them to the PWM pins on this Arduino. I have a program growing here where I uh, just go to each one of these servos, turn it 200 degrees, turn it back 200 degrees, just as a demonstration. I define servo pins, servo pin 0, 1, 2, 3, 
uh, to pin 10, 5, 6, and 3. And then I made an array of servo objects. And then I also made an array of the pins. Then I attached the pins to the servos. And then I just have this loop here where I go to each servo and rotate it. And it seems to be working fine. So now everything for the Arduino is wired up here. Um, all I have left to do is duplicate the wiring over for the Teensy. All right, what we're gonna do now is take Felix's test board and hook it up to this and see if we can cycle the ball loading and unloading. Okay, so we'll make pin zero, ball drain. Switch zero will be ball drain, and switch one will be home. So you're calling spy all the time, right? Yeah, that was your original test. I just duplicated it into a function into the uh, ball okay. loader test. So you can... Okay, well, just, just to make it really easy, let's do servo, zero, right, 90. We'll do a delay of a second, and then we'll do 80. Voila. The longer delay is position 80. So that means when the number goes down, it goes counterclockwise. So okay. zero that way, 180 that way. So we should be able to test spy whenever, right? Yeah. Okay, state zero. Int load position equals 90. Int home position equals zero. Always starts less than 90. Okay, so state zero equals needs to home. State one equals has homed. So the reason I did that there is so we can actually do that in the main loop. Okay. So in the main loop, we can do switch loader state case zero. Do you unplug that servo? It's driving me insane. Insaner. Okay, so if the switch is open, we keep decrementing loader position until it isn't. Because I think if we go all the way down, yeah, the switch is open no matter what. All right, shall we see if it works? Ball loader, right? Mm -hmm. I have the servo disconnected, so I'm going to manually home it with my hand. Okay, so let's go down. Edge check one. So we're going to go backwards, find the edge again. Should give us edge check two. Yep, edge check two, and then go up again. Now we consider that home, okay. Cool. All right, so what I wanna try next is once we get into case state three, we'll just do it in this case statement to make sure that it happens after everything else, but then we'll never leave case state three. Case state three, okay, so we don't wanna delay. So let's give it a home position, int dump position equals I'm just call it 75. So dump position is where it dumps the ball. So once we find the home position here where we say uh, home position equals loader position, then we'll say dump position equals home position plus 75 since it's in degrees. Loader state equals three. Actually, I'm gonna create two more case statements to make this like kind of, well, one more case statement to make it like a little bit of a program within a program. That's a great thing about case statements. You can make programs within programs. In case three, we go servo, zero, right, loader position, plus, plus. Okay, then we check if loader position equals dump position, if it you know gets to where it needs to go, delay one second so the ball can roll out, and then we'll change loader state to four so it'll execute what's going on down here. And this should allow us okay. to toggle between the states. And then case four is gonna be basically the inverse of what we just did. So loader position minus, minus, and then if it equals home position, same thing. We'll wait for a second. I'm going to switch for two seconds. And then switch it back to three. Of course, we only need one break. So we see what happens? Yeah. So it should do the homing routine and then... Uh... Sweet. This is going to go back and forth between those then? Until the end of time. Brilliant. Oh, thanks, Felix. Uh, let's see, if loader position equals home position. So we can actually do more with this now. We can, we can actually set loader state to five. So this is why case statements you know, are, so, are so cool. So it dumps, it goes back to home, and then we put it in the fifth state. So in the fifth state, we could detect the uh, ball drain. Okay. Yeah, so if we're, we're in state five, we'll do this. If switch check and that's zero equals one, which means it's been triggered, ball in drain. Uh, so we'll give it a little bit of time to rest in position, and then all we have to do is change loader state 
to three, which is the dump routine, and that should open up the. Uh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Ready? Yep. Loading now. Now oh, it should stay there. Bam! Nailed it. Well, that pretty much covers it for the max. It seems like we got everything we need. Well, that's all the time we have for today. We did a pretty good job finishing up what we needed to do. Felix worked on the driver board. You want to talk about that a little bit more? Yeah, Recap. Um, pretty much got everything connected to the Arduino mm -hmm. and the Teensy. Only thing left is connecting the audio. Cool. And you did quite a bit with the uh, mechanical design. Uh, yeah, we've been able to test the mechanical design because you got this board so well wired. Uh, yeah, we have a plunger mechanism, pop bumper mechanism, Pop, pop, pop. Uh, target, this one was really simple. Target, flip, target, flip. target. Bam, bam. Flippers, we actually did it in a previous episode. And then the last thing we did was the ball loading mechanism. Let us know what you think about the mini pinball build thus far on the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash TBHS. You can also go there to read about other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. See you next time. Super Ultra Mega Time. Memory. All alone in the moonlight. That's right, I'm singing Cats. Yeah! <laughs> Sorry. It's like I'm having flashbacks of my, my dumb wife. God, she was terrible. Today, Max Olmsted, our videographer, is in front of the camera. Today I'm in front of the camera because I want to learn about motors and motor drivers and switches. And I was wondering if you could teach me about that. Trying to get the magnets out. There's a big magnet. Moment of truth. It's not Felix's logic circuit, it's an RS latch. Didn't blow up yet? You got a short somewhere. It seems I've ruined it. Would you want to squanch it like this or would you want to squanch it like that?